this one's quite exciting. We're going to create something like this. So we're going to bring in a pattern tile into our text. And then if we have time, I'll show you how I did these effects with the text at the bottom, making each letter different with the overlaying and then cutting into the letters and dividing them and joining them as we have done here. But what's exciting is if we go over to another artboard and I show you. So let's create a rectangle. We don't want that bright colour for now. So what we're going to do is, right, over the past few videos I've been showing you how to tell if your pattern is joining up properly and how we got rid of the white lines on the screen and all that. So this one is a much simpler and a much quicker way to bring a pattern in to your shape. So what we want to do is we go to the fill tool, which is that, or press G which brings you to the fill tool and then we go up to where it says type and click on bitmap that will open up your finder we can pick a pattern tile and it automatically fills it now we've got these two l-shaped thingy here and if we drag take one of the points and we drag it we make the pattern smaller and be careful because we can also rotate the pattern so make sure that you're snapped so there that is the best and the quickest way so we can scale it right down or we can scale it right up and then we can see what our pattern looks like and there are no white lines nothing to worry about so that's the quickest and the easiest way that we can do that right so let's delete that for now what we're going to start off with is let's create some text so we're going to say i've got caps on flower oh the cat's come to join us let's just reduce that down in size a bit bring that down oh blimey she's off <laughs> now i've got the you can see i've got the letters all squished up i'll show you settle down now you see i've got the letters squished up i'll show you how i did that i went into the character style and the kerning here so let's set that to zero so you can see that's separated out now and then what i did was i just held the arrow at the bottom and moved the tracking right down until <laughs> oh cat until we're overlapping then uh, if we just copy that bring that down and highlight that and do a p and i think she's going to be scorping the whole time <laughs> size that up so it matches sit down fatty so yeah she's going to be chunter and grunting the whole way through this i suspect okay right now then to bring text to bring pattern in we've got it highlighted we click the g we go up to bitmap and we choose our pattern so let's choose a settle down fatty what's the matter with you let's go i've decided to do this at cuddle time which is just unfortunate isn't it she has her dinner she goes out and then she comes in and she demands attention so so you can see we can scale that down and if we click on this center point we can move the pattern around where we want it so that's stage one and then let's go and highlight the next one so we go to press g up where it says solid change that to bitmap and then let's change this to a different pattern let's pick the one of the lotus flowers that's rather nice so we've got a similar kind of color scale going on here and reduce that down now make sure again as i said you can rotate so make sure you've got the red line ensuring that it's straight that is of course if you want it straight but we do for now because we're going to be moving the text layers about so now let's add a background color oh you'll see actually that i don't know whether that's just because i've got my settings like that but i've gone straight into the rectangle tool and drawn it and it's automatically giving me the fill from last time so if we go and click fill and then just pick on any color we can get rid of that let's just drag this to the back now what i did before was i went into the color picker tool here at the bottom just picked a color from one of the patterns so that will do for now so that's that we've got pattern in our text and it's kind of cool isn't it now from here we can add we can go to effects and we can add an outer shadow bring the radius up and and the offset up so let's make it a tad darker so you can see we've got an outer shadow going on but if you see on this example we've got the shadow going around each letter what we need to do for that is let's get rid of that 
So let's undo. Take that shadow off. So we need to, because we want to manipulate each letter individually. So we highlight that and then we right click, make sure we're in the move tool and go to, oh, I can't see because of the uh, my phone's in the way. At the top, there we are, convert to curves. Got the microphone right in that corner, so I can't see what I'm doing. So we've converted to curves. Now see, that's given us this little group now. So now if we open that up, we've got every letter separated. So to get the O above the W, we just click on that and drag that up. And then to get the W above the E, let's just drag that and bring that down below. And if you want the E above the R, we bring that down to the bottom. There we are. Now then, we want to add the shadow. So we add it to one, click on the outer shadow, add the radius and the offset a little bit bigger. So make sure we've got scale with object and then press close. And then if you just click on where it says FX, hold that down, hold the option key and drag that up, then let go and that's copied the effect to the next letter. And then we just do that for all of them. So this is giving each individual letter its own shadow effect rather than doing the whole thing in one go because then we won't get the shadows going over the, the letter that it's covering. So you see how that now around the O has got the shadow covering over it. So if we deselect that, so that's that. And then what I did on the, let's close that down. So if we do the same again for the power, so we want to go up to, oh, here we go, I can't see again. Go up to convert to curves, and that gives us separate letters again. And we want P at the top, or P above the O anyway. And then we want the W below the O. So, oops, so we move that down. And then we want the E below the W. And we also want the R at the bottom. Oops, I've just moved the W out of the folders. Let's put those back in. There we are. Now then, what I did to get this effect on the E and the W there is, let me see if I can remember what I did. So I clicked on the W and the E. Ah, I remember. Okay, now what we want to make sure, we want to have a copy of the W. So Command J, and let's just hide that for the moment. And then to get this shape here with the E, we highlight the W and the E, and we go up to these compound parts, I think they are, at the top, and click Divide. And as you see, that's given us this little curved bit there that cuts away from the E, but it's also cut away from the W. So this is where what I did next was just delete both of those. So we've got the bit sliced out of the E, and then that's where our complete W comes in. Then what we want to do is just highlight the E and the R and use the little arrow at the bottom and just slide them over a little bit. Then highlight the whole word and make sure we're in the black arrow tool and just resize that back onto the page again. There we are. So that's that. And then on the E and the R, you see I have them joined. So what we do there is we highlight them both and then we go up to the compound path and we add them both together. So they are one solid thing now. And I think I did the same. Oh yes, I did the same with the O and the W. So we have the O and the W and join those together too. So there we've got this cool effect. Now we haven't got any shadows on those. What we could do is we could probably see if we highlight both of those, click on out shadow, scale, bring the radius up, offset, spray that out a bit more, close that. There we are, sum them both together, and then if we click on that, hold the option down and drag it up, and we've got it on the P as well. So there we have our flower power. Now, if we wanted to change the pattern on one of them, we go back to G again and click bitmap. There we are. We can change the pattern. Let's go up like down and move it. But we can also do this. Click on the F in flower. Click on the fill tool. We go to bitmap again. And then we can change each letter on its own. 
So we've got F of forget me not. Then if we do the L, you have to kind of click it. It's almost like you have to click it twice, if you see what I mean. That's quite cool. O, highlight it and then click it again. Let's put a poppy in there. And then for the W, again, so we go to the bitmap and we click it again. Where are we? We're on the E. Choose the blackberries, make them a bit bigger. And then we want this hingy bit to move around. Let's do that there. So there we have each one, each letter differently. So there you have it. So that was quite an exciting one today. I hope this helps. So I hope you get some enjoyment out of that. And just to let you know, this flower pack that includes all of these different designs is on my website as a digital download. So you can print them off at home or you could even call them in. You could even do this actually, what we've done here, call them in and create other little words and bits and bobs with it. So do with it what you will. I'll put the link below and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. I'd love you to like and subscribe. It will really help my channel.